Hello, I hope you're doing amazing, as I am. And I've got a question for you. Are you committed to stopping stress eating or are you interested in stopping stress eating? It may sound like pure semantics, but I guarantee it's not because the difference is going to create two different results. And that's what I wanted to explore with you today. Here are three advantages of being committed rather than just merely interested in getting rid of stress eating. The first one is long-term success. Well, when we're committed, we have a high level of dedication and determination. That means that we're going to stick to our goal and we're going to keep it inside and we're going to keep it at top of mind and we're going to create the conditions so that eventually we stop stress eating. That's the first thing. We're going to keep making consistent efforts over time. We're going to stick with the goal. So the first, the first benefit is long-term success. The second benefit that I see is improved emotional well-being. Of course, we know that stress eating is an emotional type of eating, right? Stress being an emotion. If we commit to stopping that behavior, it means that we're going to find healthier ways to cope with the emotion of stress. We're going to reduce stress using different strategies than the mere um, food. We're going to develop alternative strategies, which means that we're going to rewire our brain to have more flexibility. And what's fantastic is that if you can do this with overeating, with stress eating, of course, you'll be able to apply this, the same process with other emotions that may be bothering you. So that's amazing. And the third benefit that I see to being committed rather than just merely interested into stopping stress eating is physical health benefits. We know this, even though perhaps we're not very proud of this, but very often when we feel um, stress and we cope with, with, uh, with food, we don't turn towards beans and chicken breast. Very often we turn to burgers, fries, crisps, pizza, chocolate, biscuits, cakes, right? If we learn to commit, because it's a learning, um, if we learn to commit to stop stress eating and we find a way that suits us best to stop stress eating, then chances are we'll stop after reducing little by little the amount of times we eat when we feel stressed. Of course, after a while, we're going to react to stress very differently. First of all, we'll have reduced the stress level. And then whenever we feel stressed, we're going to cope with different things, different ways than food, right? So if we reduce the amount of unhealthy foods that we consume, obviously our bodies will thank us for it. So that's the, those are the three benefits we're going to get from being committed to get rid of stress eating. Long-term success, improved emotional well-being, and finally, physical health benefits. So how do we commit to stopping stress eating? And it's interesting to realize that we may start by not being committed because we're merely interested. So let's start there. It's okay to be interested. There's nothing wrong with that, except that as we're going to see, probably it's not going to help us move towards our goal of stopping stress eating, being healthier emotionally and physically, being in control, right? So let's have a look. You know, because you've gathered the data, you've noticed that when we, you tend to overeat, it's usually because it's coming from emotion, which is stress. You know that, all right? You are aware of this behavior, this pattern that you tend to have. Perhaps you've got uh, loads of examples, pages and perhaps pages of times when you did overeat because you didn't want to feel the stress. And perhaps when you're thinking about this behavior, you're thinking, well, getting rid of stress eating could be a good idea. And when you think that thought, getting rid of stress eating could be a good idea, you probably feel interested. And if you're like me, when you're interested, chances are that you think about it a little bit, but maybe you don't create a plan. 
maybe you don't anticipate the obstacles that you faced before, so guaranteed that you will be facing again. And so you don't create strategies to tackle those obstacles. Perhaps you don't share your project with people who could help you, who could support you. Perhaps you don't even look actively for support. And when you're behaving this way, that is to say, merely thinking about this project, but not making it become true, of course, as a result, you let the goal of getting rid of stress eating remain just a mere idea. And this has nothing to do with the, the possibility of getting rid of stress eating. The fact that you're stress eating right now, the fact that some people like me, for instance, have managed to stop stress eating, right? Or even binge eating, which was my case, right? You're not feeling interested because this exists out there in the world, right? Meaning that there are people who have managed to stop stress eating. You're not feeling interested because right now you are stress eating, right? You're feeling interested because you're currently thinking getting rid of stress eating could be a good idea. Nothing seems to have gone wrong, right? It sounds very innocent, very positive too. It could be a good idea. Except that it's a bit like the volume. It's on a low, low grade, very low grade emotion. Hmm, it could be interesting, right? But you, we're not taking action from just mere interest. This is why commitment could be an interesting motion. It's as if we're amping up, we're amplifying the volume from mere interest to committed. Interest is just like, hmm, I'm thinking about this, committed is I'm doing it, no matter what, whatever comes my way, I'll do it, right? Very different emotions. So what to do? How do you get from interested to committed? Because we know that the effect, the impact of interest and the impact of commitment are going to be very different. One is going to be so much more beneficial, so much faster, to get results for you rather than the mere interest which might never get you there. You might never get rid of stress eating if it just remains an idea rather than something that you take action for. Okay, so as always I love having three steps. The first step is to notice. We've noticed. You've noticed that you stress it, you're aware of this, and now today perhaps you've gained awareness as far as your implication, your dedication, your determination is concerned. You've noticed that perhaps it's a bit low, it's a bit too low for you to take action, right? You've noticed that you're feeling interested and not fully committed. But the good news is that there's a way, of course, to move from interest to commitment. The first thing, the first step, as always, is noticing. The second step, we're going to talk about this in a minute, is to question, question that thought. And the third step is to decide, right? Once you've noticed that something's not serving you, what do you do then, okay? You can decide to change things up for you. So let's question that thought. The thought being, getting rid of stress eating could be a good idea. And we've seen that there's nothing wrong with that, except that it's very, um, it's keeping you stuck in this process of stress eating rather than moving forward and getting rid of it. So here are three questions that you could answer to help you move things a little bit. The first question could be, what would getting rid of stress eating look like, right? What would it look like if you had done it? meaning if you no longer stress eat, right? And how could you get there, right? So two different things. What would be the outcome of you not stress eating anymore? And how could you get there? I'm still going to talk about it a, li a little bit further um, in a minute. The second question could be, why would it be a good idea for you? Because the thought, it could be a good idea to stop stress eating, it's right. It could be a good idea, but now let's explore that. What's beneath that? What is your brain anticipating that if you dig a little bit more into, you would then see, you know, more in a more concrete way, more tangible way, what it would be like. And that could be very motivating because when we have the vision in our head, when it's not something vague and fuzzy, then we really want to take action. For instance, if you imagine that your trousers are going to, um, fit much better, that you're going to be able to climb up the stairs very uh, easily compared to now, then chances are that you'll want to take action from that place. 
The third question you could want to ask yourself is, how can you make this idea become reality? What are the different steps that you're going to take, that you're maybe going to want to take, to move from this place of interest to commitment, right? What are you thinking of right now? What do you need to do? What don't you need to do anymore? Maybe you need to get rid of, right? So those are the three questions to help you question the thought, getting rid of stress eating could be a good idea and to move further along. The third step as always is to change the thought. So instead of thinking, Getting rid of stress eating could be a good idea and just feeling mere interest. Here are all the thoughts that could lead you towards commitment. Being committed to stop stress eating to make sure that no matter what, you're going to get rid of this habit, of this pattern. The first thought could be, I'm noticing I'm interested in the idea of getting rid of stress eating. Simply taking a step back as always and just noticing that you're thinking a thought that's creating an emotion, right? So, ooh, I'm noticing I'm interested. Good to know. That's it. The second thought that you might want to try and emphasize could be all progress begins with an idea. So I'm right on track or I'm on the right track, whatever. Right. But just realizing that it's not actually a problem to be interested, but on the contrary, that it could be the starting point so that then you, all you have to do is amplify the thought, the emotion of interest so that it turns into commitment. So all progress begins with an idea, so I'm on the right track. And the third thought that you might consider, you know, borrowing, using, just, for, just to see, could be, I can turn interest into commitment if I want to, right? And it's really all about owning your power. You get to choose if you want to be interested or if you want to be committed. That's why I asked you to think about what it would look like, so that you get to see, is it something that you really want? Or maybe it's not an issue for you, and that's fine, right? You get to decide what's really worth your attention and dedication and not. Nobody can choose that for you. You are the master of your own life, right? You're the one who chooses. So you get to choose. You get to own what you choose, so your choice, but also the reasons why you're making that choice. And some people might think, oh, not the right choice. It's still their opinion and you still have your opinion, and that's okay. Both opinions can coexist peacefully, right? And I can show you how if you're not sure, right? But this is the third thought that you might consider thinking of. I can turn interest into commitment if I want. Very important. You're free to decide. So if you're not sure what it would be look, what would, what commitment would look like for you, I can help you. Right? Because sometimes it's difficult actually to go there, especially if we've been disappointed a lot previously with our own commitments and then not following through. It can be hard and painful to go there. That's why I'm here. So um, that's exactly what I have actually. The potential clients or the people who are drawn to me, the coaches who want to stop stress eating, I help them actually picture what it would be like to be committed during a free one hour call that I call the stress eating strategy call. And here's what we do during that call. First, we explore, as I said, what the impact of commitment would have in their life, right? If they were committed to stop stress eating once and for all, no matter what happened, then what, their, what would their future look like? It's super fun to pretend that time doesn't exist and that we're already there. It's already done and you already uh, got rid of stress eating. It's not something that you do anymore. And your life has changed for the better for you. So we know that it all starts with an idea, with imagination, so that this piece of exploration during that time together, this can only take you closer to becoming that person, actually, the one who's got rid of stress eating. So, um, the second phase, the second thing that we do during that one hour free strategy call is to explore which ways you're going to go through to create that vision where you stopped stress eating, right? 
So the first step is to explore what would it be like eventually once you've done this. And the second step is to explore all the different ways for you to get there. And of course, I can talk to you about my program because that's exactly what it's for. But I also know that my program is one among many others. And you get to choose which one is right for you where you are right now. It could be mine, no problem there, quite the opposite. I'd be delighted to help you. But it could also be something that you've learned and that you've simply forgotten or getting out of the habit of using. Or it could be something else that you are more drawn towards and that's fine too. The idea is that whatever we do during that free one hour strategy call gets you closer to being committed to getting rid of stress eating, right? So that you get to build the life that you want, the one that really suits you. Nobody else but you knows what's good for you. And in during that one hour coaching call, we actually explore so that you find what the next best step is for you. And if you're interested, I'd be delighted to have this chat with you. All you need to, to do is to book your stress eating strategy call with me. You're going to find in the, in the show notes below the link you need to click and that's it. If you can't find the right slot for you because you might not be <laughs> living in European time and so no problem there, just shoot me an email and as coaching at outlook.fr and I'm sure we'll figure it out. That's it for today. So I hope you've learned something about interest and commitment. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer them. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye.